Father, I worship your name. Father, I exalt you. Father, I honor you. Father, I glorify you. Thank you, Jesus, because you're faithful. Thank you, Jesus, because you are merciful. Thank you for the gift of yesterday. We went through the day. We went and we came back. You preserved us. Some of us traveled. You granted us journey messages. Some of us had hard cases in front of us. You resolved them. Some of us, you moved them a step, you moved us a step closer to what you, your plan is for us. Father, we worship your name. We glorify you. Thank you, Jesus, for the things you've done. Thank you, Jesus, for the things you are doing. Thank you, Jesus, for the things you will do. You are the immortal. Thank you, sir. You are the invisible. Thank you, sir. You are the only wise God. Thank you, sir. You are the I am that I am. Thank you, sir. It's in you that all things exist and consist. Thank you, sir. You call those things that are not as though they were concerning us. Thank you, sir. You are the merciful God. Thank you, sir. You are our provider. Thank you, sir. You are our stay. Thank you, sir. You are our protector. Thank you, sir. You are God all by yourself. Thank you, sir. It's in you we live. It's in you we move. It's in you that all things exist. Father, we give you praise. We are grateful for your gift of life. We know that is not of he that will it. We know that is not of he that run it. We know that you are the God who's shown us mercy. Father, thank you for your mercy. Father, thank you for your mercy. Father, thank you for your mercy. Father, we bow before your throne. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Immortal, as Shemodupe. Invisible, as Shemodupe. Only wise God, as Shemodupe. Agmane Lagbaton, as Shemodupe. The God that saves to the uttermost. Thank you, Jesus. Lekete Libraga, Desekete Mika. Isanda yane meke teske telege. Brazu kotolo mege de gede. Brazi katele mege de gedega. O kosko do lo meke telege de gedege. Aze ke telege de gedege de gede. Brasi katale mege de gedege de gede. Jakata lima kate seke telege de. Brazu kotona mege de gede. Eke seke telege de gede. E kaluka na mega da kade gede. Brazu koto meke. Father, I give you praise, I give you praise, I give you praise. Ikayena mikatele, legedege bogozoko. Yena mikashuka talege legedege. Ezanda yena mikese kete lekete. Brazu doko toma, dishakita kataliga. Ekene meke degedege degedege de. Brazu kotom, medesh kade. Eza kila makata seke tele. Brazu kotom, legedege degede. Bakashika tamege degege dege. Father, I give you praise. I honor your name. Thank you for our pregnant women. Thank you for our victory at least. Thank you for our waiting parents. Thank you for our mature single. Thank you because you are kind. You do all the things you said you would do and you do them excellently. Father, to you be all the glory. We honor you, O oh God. We exalt your name. We glorify you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You are the mighty man in battle. El Shaddai, you are the mighty man in battle. Jehovah Nisi, you are the mighty man in battle. El Shaddai, you are the mighty man in battle. Glory to your name. Let's honor the name of the Lord concerning all the things that he does for each one of us. Father, we are grateful. Father, we are grateful for waking up some this morning. Thank you, Jesus, for going and coming. Thank you, Jesus, for your healing power upon us. Thank you, Jesus, for your invisible hand that opens doors for us to walk through. Thank you, Jesus, for calling those things that are not as do they were in our lives. Thank you, Jesus, for fighting our battles. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> Father, we are grateful. We honor your name. We worship you. Jesus, thank you. Jesus, thank you. 
Jesus, thank you. Eshibaba, Eshimudukasa, you're mighty. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Igali matuse ketele ketelege. Brazu kodo meke te ketila katiyaga. Yekete mangadosh kodo le ketele. Brazu toko tomika yagida kasi ketele meke tele kelege. Brazi kate mege dege dege de. Eza tula meka tush kadale kete. Brazu toko to magadish kadale. Bika zude meke dege teleke. Father, I give you praise. You are the king of glory. You are the I am that I am. There is no God like you. I honor your name. I glorify you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for our victory list. You are the healer. We trust you, O God. Thank you, Lord, for our material single. You are the one that pairs us. We thank you, O God. Thank you for our waiting parents. Conception is your work. Thank you, Jesus, because you are the one that gives the gift of babies. Thank you for our pregnant women, because you are the one that preserves. You ensure that they carry to them and they bring forth effortlessly. My Father and my God, I honor you. I give you all the praise. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. To you be all the glory. Egadi gadi magi zakata lege. Breseke ne maguda shukata liga. Ezele bogo zokoto magade kata lege. Brazu kata me kateshke teleke. Ezandu ya ne makisa kata likato. Zege lege dege 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 dege. Brazi kaka maku teshke telege de. A kasu lege dege dege de. Brazu koto me gede gede de. Bakasi katen iyani makados. Zeke lege lege bika teshani magiza kutale. Brazu koto me gede 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 de. Bakanta yi na mi katuske de lege teke. Brazu kata meke teke teya. Busondo yonomi katasi katila gadu badush. Izanda lima kiske te leke telepa. Zupreke teke tima gadu so koto me gede gede. Bako skunda ye ne me kadush kado logo to kotoba zila braku zadu me gede kadush kadali katale kala baduske brazi gadi magade gede 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 Isanda yina mikatu skela brazi katu megede kashute basunto yonu makuskete yeba zupra undaya ni makusku tuloga fruto soto meke kai ni makuski la katus strength in the inner man for your sons and your daughters today makanduzi katu legede. Zende yemika to skanda la magede. Father, raise a standard of good against everything that contends with them. Makui ni mahandu la kiski talubra. Jundo yono makiski teke teleke to. Batuske te ye maduske to lege. Confuse the enemy on their behalf, O God. Leke te magadushke nda yutulu prakuskuda. Zunda yena mekatuske legede gede gede gede. Ikayen andadushke dome gede gede. Aziga le makuto sokondo libra izanda yanima anda jiketele basuto koto yuna meke tese keteli gededa le nema gada zuko tulu meke tese kedeli keteli ketelige brazu jojo jojo ma dizende gali keteluga show them your goodness in the land of the living makata sikele keteke pokotozo zumbra guzgunda yena mika tuskele bakanda yane meke tese katelu kataluga ba Gadeskende makatuskele gadabuskondo mazu do koto me ketele 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 may they lack not may they not lack any good thing likatule pragusko to magidash kandima kuskele ketegea. Izanda yina mika tuskele brakush kenda bo. Zopri katuskanda makatuskele. Badish kanda yene megede geda dusko logodo. Breka tuskanda meke keteleka. Brazu kete ketele meka tusketele gede gedega. Brazu ketele mega dush ketelega. Take control of their situations and circumstances right now. Makuta kia kutele kapus kenda mosh. Izanda yina mika tusko dolege. Lezen da yi makuske telege. May the captives in our midst be set free. Makuske delege. After all, that's what you came to dis- what you came to do to destroy the works of the devil. Makuye gede baguska daima. My father and my God, I'm grateful. 
thank you for the gift of today. We honor your name. We exalt you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> Thank you for all the birthdays so far in September. Thank you because your hand is upon each and every one of them for good. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for women who bring forth effortlessly. Lord, we are grateful. Thank you, Lord, because you are our God who does not sleep, who does not slumber, who is real and is here every day. <clears throat> Father, we give you all the praise. Thank you, Lord, to you be all the glory. Thank you, Father. Let your sons of rejoicing emanate from our tabernacles in the name of Jesus. Thank you for healing Pastor Inahoro and everyone else who is healing this time. Thank you, Lord, because your hand of deliverance mighty is upon him and everyone else. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we are grateful. The Jehovah Olubeja, Father, Lord, lift, O oh God, contend with the things that contend with him, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, let your glory show forth. Let your glory show forth. Let your glory show forth in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Thank you for joining the prayer call. May the God of heaven be he be kind to you in the name of Jesus. This morning, we're going to pray two prayers quickly. That's, um, yeah, two prayers quickly. The first one is a prayer for the, our leaders in church. We want to pray for our leaders in church that the Lord, the God of heaven, would grant them grace in the name of Jesus. Let's first thank God for our pastors. Maybe that's where we should start from. Our church leaders, let's thank God for them. 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 <clears throat> Because they labor over you. That's what the Bible says. They labor over you. They labor over you. So you owe them that much to, um, what's the word, to pray for them. So pray for your pastors this morning. Pray for your pastors this morning. Pray for your pastors this morning. Are you praying for your pastors? Or you are praying for yourself as usual? Pray for your pastors this morning. Thank the Lord for them. If you look at Jeremiah chapter 3, Father, thank you for every man and woman that you have called to serve your people and shepherd them. Lord, be kind to them today. Keep them, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Look at Jeremiah chapter 3 in verse number 15. Jeremiah chapter 3 in verse 15, it says, Then I will give you shepherds after my own heart, who will lead you with knowledge and understanding. We always think that we showed up and we joined church. And I was um, watching the, the, uh, the sermon at uh, the service at the well on Sunday and uh, we had Pastor Gideon come and he was uh, he was sharing that we always think that we chose our church but that no the Lord leads us there because we're the sheep of his pasture the Lord le led you wherever you are now so you don't have to like your pastor really because if, if God led you there, then it must be that that pastor is the one that God has chosen for you in this season. Look at Jeremiah 3.15 for me again. It says, then I will give you shepherds after my own heart who will lead you with knowledge and understanding. So even if someone invited you, the mere fact that you went and you decided to stay meant that something gripped your heart. And that thing is not the preaching or the worship, because that's what we always say. So yeah, it was the word, it was the worship. No, first and foremost, it was God's spirit, because the Bible says the steps of a righteous man, they are ordered by God. So you can thank God for your pastor. You may not like him in the moment. You can thank God for your pastor. You may not care anything for your pastor, but you can thank God for him. Open your mouths and be grateful for your pastors this morning. Your pastors are not perfect, I know. But I promise you, every one of them who is doing the work because God has called him or her to do it, is giving it their best shot in the moment. So be grateful for them. 
Thank God for your man and woman of God today. Thank God for them. Thank God for them. We always know the many things that they don't do right. But what about the things? They show up at least. Sunday in, Sunday out, they show up. When it's convenient or not convenient, they show up. When they have food in their homes or they don't have food, they show up. When their child is ill or their wife is, is ill, they show up. When something, they show up. And for that reason alone, even if they show up and they don't do well by your estimation, since you are the marker of pastors, at least thank God that they show up. Thank God for your leaders this morning. We don't do that often. We complain a lot about them. And then when we come to prayer, when we come to services and prayers, we want them to pray for us. Today is the day that you get to pray for them. Open your mouths and pray for them. Open your mouths and pray for them. See, if, if I didn't pastor, I would not have recognized or realized how hard it is to be a pastor. You have no idea. Unless somebody is doing a business. But if someone is called of God and they showed up to do this work, it's one of the toughest jobs that there is. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Because if he was running a business business, he has a right to employ who he wants to employ and he can fire. The work he does with you is not the same. Some of you are a thorn in his flesh. He's obligated to just keep pastoring you. Hmm. Thank God for your pastors this morning. Even if it's just saying, Father, thank you for Pastor Peter. That's enough this morning. Lord, I'm grateful for all my pastor brothers and sisters. Thank you for Reverend Kasali, oh God. Thank you for Pastor Mayoko. Thank you for um, Apostle Busola. Thank you for Prophetess Fanny. Thank you, Lord, for Pastor Mark. Thank you, Lord, for uh, Pastor Gideon. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for all the pastors at the well, for Pastor Val, for Pastor Nahor, for Pastor Wumi, for all the ministers at the well. Everyone you used to bless us. Father, we are grateful this morning. Thank you for them. Thank you for them. Thank you for my pastors in diaspora. Thank you for the ones that hold me up, the one whose word I hear in my spirit. Thank you, Jesus, for them. Father, Lord, thank you for them. I give you all the praise for their lives. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Father, Lord, in this season, be kind to them. Keep them, O oh God. Watch over their households. Provide for them. Father, may they not be put to shame in the name of Jesus. Where there is sickness, heal, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. Where there is pain, Father, Lord, resolve, O oh God. Where there is uncertainty, Father, step in, O oh God. Be kind to our pastors today, Father, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for all the pastors over the years that you used to bless us at our conferences. Father, thank you for them. Thank you for the men and women whom you've used to be a blessing to move us from one level to another level. Lord, we say thank you this morning. Thank you for them, oh God. Father, keep them in the name of Jesus. Father, bless them in the name of Jesus. Father, make all things better for them in the name of Jesus. Thank God for your men and women of God this morning. Mm. Yes. You don't want to do it? Doesn't matter. Bless the Lord for them. Bless the Lord for them. Brethren, it's not that easy to do this work. It's not that easy to do this work. You will be dying, and yet you're supposed to go and pray for someone else. You will pray with and for everybody else. Their answers will come like that. And you are sitting on your thing and you're wondering, Lord, but I prayed for that and I prayed for that. Why is it that mine is standing still? You must pray for your pastors. And this morning, yes, I'm not moving on yet. Pray for them. Pray what you know them because you gossip about them. So it's those things you gossip about, pray them today. How he has only one suit, pray for them. How all she knows is makeup. Pray for her. How she has a temper, pray for her. Yes. How their children are wayward, pray for them this morning. How they never have enough money, pray for them this morning. Because those are the things you complain and gossip about. How about you pray for them? This morning, pray for your men and women of God. Father, Lord, that you be kind to them. Lord, that everywhere there is a storm raging, that you will quell the storm. 
in the name of Jesus, where their money is short, Lord, that you provide for them. In the name of Jesus, Lord, where they are, they are lacking in clarity, that you grant them grace. In the name of Jesus, Father, be kind to our, the men, the shepherds that you've given us. We ask that you bless them. Where they have to push their cars to start, Father, give them new cars. In the name of Jesus. Where is September? And some of them have not paid fees. Lord, provide for them. And if necessary, use us to provide for them. In the name of Jesus. Lord, may they lack no good thing today. In the name of Jesus. Father, thank you. Brethren, I need you to do something today. When we finish this prayer call, if you have a number for your pastor, send him an encouraging message today. Just do that for me, okay? Do that for me. I promise you, you will be the ray of sunshine that they see on set, perhaps a cloudy day. So today when we are done, send a message of encouragement to your pastor. Just bless them. If it's possible, send them uh, 10,000 hours. It's a buy recharge card today. Be kind to your pastors today. No, I don't need anything. This is about your pastor. More than 70% of you don't attend the well. And those at the well know that I'm good. So do that for your pastors today. Just randomly. Let's assume it is random. Send them a message today. Put their names on your timers, on your calendar schedule, a.k.a., you know, every 12 noon or something. Pray for Pastor XYZ and spend five minutes. Just do that today. Do that today. They need to know that you see them. The second prayer we're going to pray this morning is a prayer for unity in the church. In a prayer for unity in the church. In Philippians chapter 2, in verse number 2, it says that God delights in unity among his own. It's the people who have the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. So let's pray for oneness in the church of Jesus Christ across the globe this morning. Let's pray for oneness. Now, it doesn't matter what the doctrines are, you know, the, the, um, the interpretations of the doctrines are, are per denomination or per house, that when they come together, when we come together in different places, that the gaps, you know, the dots will connect. Pray for unity for the church this morning. For the Lord will pray for the church of Jesus Christ upon the face of the earth. Lord, that will be as one in the name of Jesus. We pray for the church this morning. Father, Lord, that the church of Jesus Christ will be united in the name of Jesus. In John 17, 21, it says that they all may be one, that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee, that they may also be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Jesus was praying for his disciples, and by extension, he was praying for the church. He said, let there be a oneness, a unity amongst them, and let that unity also be with us. I want you to pray for the church of Jesus Christ today. That will be one and that will be one with God uh, in the name of Jesus. That will be one and will be at one with God in the name of Jesus. Pray for the church of Jesus Christ this morning. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. If you look at First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10, the Bible talks about there being no divisions in the church. Paul commanded church members to be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. I want you to pray for the church of Jesus Christ across the globe today, that they will be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgments. In the name of Jesus, pray for the church of Jesus. 
Jesus Christ this morning across the globe. Bakuska de Megede, Brazuka Toko Toma, Dishkete Lika Taleka Lage, Ezakumba Dishkanda Yanene Kete. Thank you for oneness in the body of Christ. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for oneness in the body of Christ. In the name of Jesus. Every division and divisive tendencies. Father, we raise a standard of the blood against it. Thank you, Lord, for oneness. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. In 1 Corinthians, our last prayer for the day. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 12, all the way to 27. It talked about the church as one body. It says, for as the body is one, and it begins to talk about the different parts of the body and how they must work in sync and in harmony. Pray that the church of Jesus Christ will work in sync. Those who have the prayer, the, 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 the assignment to, to, to mature believers, you know, they will do their work well. Just the same way as those who have the assignment to bring believers to health will do their work well. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says we know in part and we prophesy in part. But I'm praying concerning the church of Jesus Christ today that when we get into the room together that our voices will not be discordant, that they will blend, that there will be harmony, that the fullness of the mind of Christ will be in that room. In the name of Jesus. Are you praying for your church? and the church of Jesus Christ. By the way, do you know that you have been praying for yourself? If you prayed for the church, you prayed for you. Father, keep the church, oh God. Keep your church rapture people. May your church be bold. May your church be courageous. May your church be truthful. May your church be delightful. May your church be an attraction for unbelievers to come. May we not be repellents, oh God. In the name of Jesus, let let your blessing be upon the church of Jesus Christ in Nigeria. Father, thank you. In Nigeria especially, let your blessing be upon the church of Jesus Christ in Nigeria. Father, Lord, wear that on disagreements. Father, Lord, resolve. Let your name be glorified. Release your spirit of unity again upon us, O God. In Jesus' mighty name, and we have prayed. Amen and amen. My consolation when I think about the church is that the Bible says that God will build his church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against her. Father, thank you for building your church. The gates of hell shall not prevail against her. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Father, Lord, we thank you for the nation of Nigeria. Could you make your declaration with me that Nigeria is working? Father, thank you because Nigeria is working. Father, thank you because Nigeria is working. Lord, we give you praise because Nigeria is working. Thank you, Jesus, because Nigeria is working. Thank you, Lord, because Nigeria is working. Thank you, Father, to you be all the glory. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Thank you for joining the prayer call. Please remember to share and remember to like. May the God of heaven, may he be kind to you in Jesus' name. Please share, please like, please share, please like. I know that the God of heaven, he'll be kind to you in the name of Jesus. Today we start to round off chapter 5 of the book of First Peter, the book of First Peter. How many of us have been blessed so far with the book of First Peter? If you've been blessed, say yes. If you've been waiting for me to be done so that I'll move on to something else, say well. But I know that I have been blessed teaching it. The preparation is opened my eyes to what a hopeful person looks like. You know, we just think that a hopeful person just confesses the word of God. But I saw that there is character that a hope, I've seen that there is character that a hopeful person was like, hey, Pastor Richard, I don't miss you. God bless you. A hopeful person must have character. And I'm grateful to God for that. A hopeful person must have character. And I'm grateful to God for that. A, a hopeful person must have character. And this morning, I'm grateful that I'm learning that, you know, in just studying the book of First Peter, I have been reminded of so much. God bless you for 
been saying yes. So yes, we have concluded. Now, if you want us to continue to second Peter, say yay. If you want us to continue to second Peter, say yay. Um, yes. Somebody's like, shouldn't Holy Spirit tell you what to do? Eh? Holy Spirit says we should tell ourselves what to do now. So yay. Okay, I'm seeing some yay. But the book of First Peter chapter number five, Peter has not let up on the character of a people who have hope. If you did not understand what this whole book was about, this whole book is about the fact that there is a character posture that supports the hope that we have in Christ. Because we have a hope in Christ, there is a way we must do. That's what this is all about. Verse 1, 1 Peter chapter 5. The elders who are among you, I exhort. I who am a fellow elder, and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that will be revealed. Shepherd the flock of God, which is among you, serving as overseers, not by compulsion, but willingly, not for dishonest gain, but eagerly, nor as being lords over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the ship, chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that does not fade. In the message, it says, I have a special concern for, for church leaders. I know what it's like to be a leader in on Christ's sufferings as well as the coming glory. Here's my concern, that you care for God's flock with all the diligence of a shepherd not because you have to, but because you want to please God. Not calculating what you can get out of it, but acting spontaneously. Not buzzily telling others what to do, but tenderly showing them the way. When God, who is the best shepherd of all, comes out in the open with his room, he will see that you have done it right and commend you lavishly. Hallelujah. So Peter turned his focus to the leaders of the church, you know, in the beginning of chapter five of first Peter. Now the question would be, who are the elders? Elders are supposed to be people mature enough and who qualify to lead others. And contrary to what we think, that you just wake up and set up Jesus by your side, I did church in the corner, there has to be a call. And there has to be a call of God upon your life. And there has to be some raising before you get in there. When children get in leadership positions such as this, you can tell because we act crazy. So when we're talking about elders, we're talking about those who are called, those who are on a journey with God because God called them to do this work. Yes? You know, I like the way I'm going to be teaching in the blend of the New King James translation and the, um, the message translation. It says, do the work as a partaker of the glory that will be revealed as a partaker of the sufferings of Christ and someone who has an expectation of a glory that will be revealed. Leaders, if you're a pastor today, at least I saw one, Pastor Richard, God bless you. I'm sure there are a few more who are leaders in church here. The Bible says lead. Number one, ask like you understand what it means to partake in the sufferings of Jesus Christ. And number two, as a people who have an expectation that there is a glory that will be revealed in this service that we have been in. Ah, I tell Jesus so, maybe not every day, but he knows my heart. That you see this work, there must be a glory revealed though. Me, I, I did not come to Lagos to pack sand. I'm not doing this work so that at the end of the day, my life will end up jackware like that. God sees my heart that I'm putting all that I know in the moment. I might not be doing it well by some people's reckoning, but I'm giving it my all in this moment. And because I'm giving it my all, I have an expectation that there is a glory to be revealed coming. There's a glory coming. 
This glory may not be a, a house or a car. It better be part of it. Because all of you think that pastors should live in hearts just because they are your pastors to prove that they are spiritual. You who claim to be spiritual, do you live under a cave, inside a cave? But I don't even want to go there today because if I go there, I'll be distracted. But the point is that when those of us who lead, we should lead like the expectation is the glory of God that will be revealed. Because if we lead in any other way, amen, we will make mistakes far. If I lead by who, who greeted me yesterday, I will not lead tomorrow. If I lead by the offerings that I see sometimes to run this ministry, I will not show up on Sunday. If I lead by the things I've heard people say about me, when I'm breaking my back to do this work, I shall not show up the next day. But we must lead like there is an expectation from God himself, his glory revealed in us. His glory revealed in us. That's how we lead. The glory of God coming. Now, when you have an expectation like that, the Bible says the expectation of the righteous shall not be cut short. It says the rod of the wicked will not rest on the lot of the righteous. Because I have an expectation that God is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. According to Hebrews chapter 6, verse 10, do you think I'm looking at you? I'm not looking at you. I'm not showing up this morning because you will call me. I showed up because God has not told me to move on to something else. I keep saying it. It's not about you. It's about the God who asked me to do this. It's about the God who asked me to do this. That's why I show up. I have a congregation I don't know. But I'm here. And I'll continue to be here for as long as he tells me to stay here. He says, do the work as a partaker of the glory that will be revealed. Have an expectation from God that we do not serve him in vain. He's a reward of them who diligently seek him. He says we should do the work as shepherds and as overseers. I like the word. An overseer is not the owner. Kaina Mikatsus. An overseer is not the owner. It is not your own. It doesn't belong to me. Any day he says, hand the well over. I jokingly tell them every day, I say, if he told me this morning, you won't see me five minutes later, my journey, I will so run and leave it in your hands, which will concern me. I'm not afraid to step away. My life isn't this thing. Because I know it's not mine anyway. So whatever he wants to do with it, I keep telling him every day, if you want me to give it to someone else, tell me. If you want me to shut it down, tell me. Anything you want me to do with it, just tell me I will do it. Shepherds or overseers, overseers don't own it. Overseers don't own it. Yet, if you are both a shepherd and an overseer, there is a diligence. The message translation says, with the diligence of a shepherd, I had to go and check it out. What are the, some of the characteristics of shepherding? Let's if quickly go to John chapter number 10. Go to John with me, John chapter 10. I want to read verse 1 to 8, then I'll show you something. And if you've not read my book, um, Bankable, you should read it. If you read Bankable, you understand this portion. John chapter, um, chapter number 10, verse 1 to 8. It says, most assuredly, this was Jesus speaking. I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him, the, to him, the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger. <laughs> All of you that are following strangers, may God deliver you. Let me go on. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, for they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this illustration, but they did not understand the things which he spoke to them. Then Jesus said to them again, most assuredly I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All whoever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep 
did not hear them. There are things that a shepherd will do. Remember, you are both an overseer and a shepherd. An overseer suggests that it doesn't belong to you. A shepherd suggests that there is a diligence with which you do the work that you will do. Father, I pray for your son or daughter field in the name of Jesus that you will grant her heart's desires in the name of Jesus Lord that you smile upon her that you see her even as she has asked in Jesus mighty name amen and amen feel the Lord sees you and he will meet you at the point of your need in Jesus name shepherds from that John chapter 10 verse 1 to 8 I saw that shepherds are the ones who set the examples Shepherds set examples. You know, it, Paul said, he said, follow me as I follow Jesus. That's a shepherd. He sets the example. It's not prophet, do what I say, not what I do. Set the example. I don't have time, so I'm going to rush through this. Number two, shepherds are trustworthy. If they say yes, it is yes. If they say no, it is no. And if you're a leader in the church here, and your yes is not yes. Well, now, man, you need to resign and go and look for something else to do. Go to a line of business where integrity and honesty is not a thing. In this line of business, people must be able to trust us. Yes? If you say yes, let it be yes. Even to your heart, that's what the Bible says. The Bible says if you swore in a vow to your heart, it says fulfill it anyway. Number one, it will teach you not to be rash in your vow taking anymore. But number two, it will tell God that you're willing to suffer even with Christ. Do you understand that? So trustworthiness is a trait of shepherds and overseers who understand, who are hopeful people and understand to stand in the way that God has called them to. Number three, they provide, they provide, they provide. They provide, they provide, they provide, they provide, they provide. I'm teaching it. If I've ever taken anything from you that I'm not supposed to have, come and tell me. If I don't tell me, say it in the comments now. Our job is to provide. Whether we build you up by the word so that you can go and gather for yourself or we show you how to gather. Whatever, it was never, the, 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 the template was not that we would take and take and take. I have the Bible, that's a description for the grid. Shepherds are not grid. Our job is to provide. Hmm. If your pastor lives in a house where his rent is 250, don't bring your your rent of 850 and say pastor pay because that's the stabi said you should provide that's not what i'm saying okay but the point is when we do these things properly i'm not checking on you uh often uh lois i will be checking on you somebody help me check on lois on my behalf <laughs> praise god number four they're sacrificial. You have no idea the sacrifices we make, that leaders make, and you have no idea. You have no idea the sacrifice we should make. It's shepherds are sacrificial. Mm -hmm. They make sacrifices. When it's not convenient, you show up. Shepherds will not eat. They will ask others, have you eaten? A shepherd's child will be ill. They will leave and go and pray for someone else's child. Shepherds. Shepherds are invested in the work. They are invested in the work. See, I want you to understand that there are shepherds and there are hirelings. Hirelings are those ones who came for the bread and the bacon. I'm talking to leaders who did not come for the bread and the bacon. Kate, thank you. I'm talking about leaders who did not come for the bread and the bacon. 
one of the things that I learned very quickly is when it comes to giving, concerning anything, stand in the forefront, make your sacrifice before you would ask anyone else to make a sacrifice. Sacrificial, invested people, invested people, relational people. One of the toughest part of the job for me is relationships. I'm a relational person, but I cannot do a lot of people at the same time. It's one of the toughest part of the job. Because of this work, I had to learn to hug people because of this work. It's not my thing. My hug space is my space, but I've had to learn to hug people because of this work. I know for some of you who are the life of the party, that doesn't matter to you. For those of you who don't know, so that you understand, so those of you who don't understand this work, this thing that I'm doing, that I'm talking about, who, me, I'm an introvert, this girl. My favorite place is on top of my bed in my room. It's like a throne. I can do everything there. You have no idea. Shepherds should be relational. <laughs> they will call you for party that has no sense, no head, no tail. They expect you to come. If you say no, they get angry. I'm not coming to parties, those kinds of parties. Um, if I say sorry and you can't take that one, mm, but that's the point. Relational doesn't mean that they become your footmat. I don't know why I'm teaching it on both sides. Maybe because I'm there and I've had seen, you know, people hold me up and I've also seen people trample on me. Shepherds have to be visionary. You must see. You know, John Maxwell is the one that crystallized this for me. He said leaders are the ones that climb, you know, that go into a forest, climb a tree, look around and say, you yep, wrong forest. It's not that you cannot make mistakes, but even if the, you make mistake, I line and I, I, I acknowledge and say, Kai, I led you in the wrong part, the wrong path. Let's go another path. They are visionaries. They have the capacity, they work with God to see. They have the capacity or they should have the capacity to see. It's crazy that someday I don't know what, what is happening in my life, but I see what is happening in other people's lives. It frustrates me. Because I just want to know what, I want to solve my own problems. In Ugo, I want to solve my own problems. Shepherds establish boundaries. This is the one that we don't like. If you are prone to people pleasing like me, you don't want to establish boundaries. And if everybody around you is a bully, they don't want you to establish boundaries. The shepherds, they establish boundaries. If things are not, you know, there must be, there must be boundaries in the house of God. All of the Bible is a boundary book. All of the Bible is a boundary book. But what do we do? When shepherds either don't roll over, they say, if you say like that, you see, this job is not political. So you don't just come and say, hey, what all of you think is what all of us will do. No. It may be popular, but it may not be God's will in the moment. That one of the responsibilities of the shepherd is to set boundaries. Mm. We don't lead by compulsion. He said willingly. I don't have time. You don't lead for dishonest gain. I don't care what the world has. I honestly don't care. No concern me. I tell them, I challenge them every day. I will not ask you, and I will not take from the one that anybody has given. By the grace and mercy of God, that's why I'm hustling my own hustling. And if Jesus tarries, he will always breathe upon what I have to offer. This is not business. And so we should not run. When I say it's not business, it's not your personal business. Remember, you're an overseer. You are a custodian. You are a steward. What that means is that there is a day of account rendering that is coming. When the owner will come, you must be ready to render account. And accounts on every level. Yep. It's not for dishonest gain. 
The gain is dishonest. It's not to say that because you do this work that you will not be blessed or that people should not bless you within the work. That's not the point. The gain is dishonest if it is the only reason you came. If that's the motive for setting off, then they wait for you for front. The God of heaven is waiting for you at the end of the journey. It's not so that you can wear Armani suits and drive Lamborghinis that this job is. That's not why. It is for the souls, your primary um, 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 tool um, product is you're selling Jesus to, to buy souls of men. That's what we've been called to do. It's not to be lords. It's not to be lords. I see those kits, that's what I call them, where pastors don't walk on the ground. They are skits. I doubt that those things are real. They are skits because no man in his true sense who's called of the Lord will do that. I see skits where pastors don't carry their bags. And you, congregation, you are adding to the problem. Wife no go carry a husband bag for her. will come, go they carry church own. Husband no go ask a wife, you don't bath. You go come church, you won't bath pastor. You are part of the problem. We're not supposed to be lords. We're not supposed to be lords. <laughs> because we are the example of the flock. We are the example of the flock. We are the example of the flock. If you want your congregation members to treat their wives well, you first treat your wife well. If you want your congregation members to treat their husbands well, you first treat your husband well. If you want your congregation members to raise their children well, you do your best to raise your children well. If you want your congregational members to give, you first give. If you want your congregation members to be uh, free and to be honest and to be transparent, you first be authentic, honest and transparent. I take exceptions to pastors who hide things from their congregation. It's not supposed to be so. How will they learn for you? I take exceptions to pastor whose, pastors whose lives are perfect. They know they seek, they know they quarrel, they know they borrow money, they know they do anything. Uh, they, they live in heaven. They just show up on Sunday to the earth to preach to you. I take exceptions to those ones. We are supposed to be authentic for people to see us when we fall and when we rise. Because that's life, isn't it? Mm -hmm. We only lead because we have been entrusted with the journey. So when we take this work like somebody entrusted it to us, it means that we know that we will come back to render account. Read your Matthew 25 very well. The entire chapter is about accountability, stewardship and accountability. Be good stewards. Remember in Luke 19, verse 13, he said, do business till I come. That is, when I come back, the books will be open. When the books are open, what will he say about you as the leader? What will he say as the leader? What will he say as the leader? What will he say as the leader? Does that make sense? What will he say as to about you as the leader? Hallelujah. Does this make sense? When the chief shepherd appears, the Bible says the chief shepherd will appear. When he appears, he says he's the one that will reward you. He's a rewarder of them that diligently do his work. He's the one that will reward you, the chief shepherd, when he shows up. So your pastor has a master. That's also why, you know, when I think about it, you shouldn't force too much about your oh, pastor is doing right or not doing right. He has someone that he's going to answer to. He has someone that is going to answer to. He has someone that is going to answer to. Hallelujah. 
all the manipulators came out today. Jesus is Lord. My brothers and my sisters, here's my conversation with you this morning. If you are the leader, do the work well. If you are in the mix of the followership, treat your leaders well. You are not their boss. You are not their boss. So those small, small committees that you are holding behind to tear them down, you are not helping. Mm -mm, you are not helping. Leaders, you say, stay your lane, lead. You see, one of the things that I have learned on this journey is that I entered it wanting to be friends with everyone in the congregation. My first shock is that I cannot be friends with everyone in the congregation. It doesn't matter what you do, they don't want to be your friends. And now I get it, seven years down the line, I get it. So again, leading is lonely. But when you do this work because God called you to do it, he finds a way of putting men and women, even if he doesn't put men and women in your life in this season, he is there with you. He said, I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. I'll never leave you, leave you and I'll never forsake you. We started this journey by praying for our pastors. I want you to close by blessing your pastors this morning. And pastors, if you are here and you're doing pelik pelik jaja daga anyhow, it is time for you to have to go back to repentance. Let's go. Lord, I've not been leading as you asked me to lead. Have mercy on me, oh God. Have mercy on me. And you that have been leading and all you see is what is wrong. Today is the day that you go back and say, thank you for leading me. Should have led better, but for the small one you're doing, I'm saying thank you. If you're on this prayer call and you're here to give your life to Jesus, and there's pastors that are making it hard for you to give your life to Jesus, I apologize on behalf of the pastors, but you need one. The Bible says that he will give you shepherds after your own heart. Give your life to Jesus and ask him for the right shepherd and he will give you the shepherd after your own heart. How do I do that? Lord Jesus, I give you my life. Believe that Jesus is your Lord and Savior and give your life to him. Lord Jesus, I give you my life. Lord Jesus, I give you my life. The rest of us, let's break bread. As pastor not leading well, I repent today. Father, have mercy in the name of Jesus. Help me to do this work the way you've called me to do. May I not be found wanting, oh God, in the name of Jesus. This is how hopeful leaders lead. Remember that the overriding part of this journey is that we are people of hope. There's a character posture that supports being a person of hope. Thank you so much for joining the prayer call this morning. Um, if Jesus tarries, I'll see you tomorrow. And then again, Lois, I'll do my best to check on you. But let me put this last word in. You don't check on me often either. So we are even, right? God bless you. Have a great rest of your day. I'll see you tomorrow morning. Give Jesus stars. Okay.